Chapter 19 of Astounding Stories 8, August 1930. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Astounding Stories 8, August 1930 by Arthur J. Burks. Chapter 19 The Reader's Corner. A MEETING PLACE FOR READERS OF ASTOUNDING STORIES TO THE RESCUE Dear Editor, I hope you can see fit to print this letter in the July issue of Astounding Stories. This letter is written in defense of Ray Cummings, and in reply to the letter of C. Harry Yeager, 2900 Jordan Road, Oakland, California. Following is an extract of Mr. Yeager's letter. Quote, also, I like my authors to make an original contribution to whatever theory of science they develop fictionally. This Ray Cummings does not do in his very interesting story, Phantoms of Reality. His beginning is palpably borrowed from Francis Flagg's story, The Blue Dimension, which appeared in a science fiction magazine in 1927. End quote. Another paragraph is devoted to explaining his claim. He claims that Cummings' method of transporting his characters from one dimension or planet to another is practically copied from Flagg's story, the method, that is, not the narration. I hope to prove that if any borrowing was done, it was done by Flagg. Incidentally, Flagg's story, The Blue Dimension, was printed in 1928, not 1927, as Mr. Yeager says. I have in my possession a story by Ray Cummings named Into the Fourth Dimension and published in another magazine during the last month of 1926 and first ones of 1927. And in this story, printed two years before Flagg's story, Cummings uses almost the same apparatus of passing from one dimension to another as is used in Phantoms of Reality. I will not discuss whether this procedure is to be approved or not. This letter is not to be construed as an attack on Mr. Yeager or Mr. Flagg, or on either of the two stories under discussion. If Mr. Yeager will let me know, I will send him Ray Cummings' story into the fourth dimension, as clipped from the magazines. I write this letter to the magazine instead of Mr. Yeager, so that if anyone was misled by Mr. Yeager's well-meant but mistaken criticism, they will be straightened out. Donald Conyon, Petoskey, Michigan A Wish for Success Dear Editor, I have read both of your first issues. I am writing to say that I wish you success with your new magazine which I know will succeed. Also, to say, I wish you would get more of the Carnes and Dr. Bird stories by Captain S. P. Meek, for I think everybody, including myself, likes them. I also enjoyed Creatures of the Light. Thomas D. Taylor, 415 South 7th Street, Boise, Idaho. No Kick any more, Dear Editor, I have been a reader of Astounding Stories ever since you started it, and I guess I'm getting too particular, as I don't get the kick out of it any more that I did in the first issues. That is, I don't get the kick out of all of the stories as I did at first. However, Murder Madness sure is a hot one. Why not print a story by Sax Romer, H. G. Wells, or some of them? H. Elworth Jones, Box 340, Rural Route 6, Battle Creek, Michigan. Via Postcard Dear Editor, Astounding Stories is an astounding magazine. It has really astounding stories. It couldn't be better. There's hardly room for improvement. May Astounding Stories be more astounding yet. I like it. Monroe Hood Stinson, 1742 12th Avenue, Oakland, California. Only Fiction Dear Editor, I have just finished a story in the February 1930 issue of Astounding Stories entitled Into Space by Sterner St. Paul. 
I would like to know if it is a true story, if the actions described in it really happened, or is it merely a story of fiction? Dan S. Scherer, Shawneetown, Illinois Perhaps soon. Dear Editor, I have just finished reading your new magazine, Astounding Stories. It is the best magazine I have ever read. Keep up the good work and you will find me a constant reader. I have only one suggestion to make. Let Astounding Stories come out every other Thursday. Harold Kulko, 433 Palmer East, Detroit, Michigan More Preferences Dear Editor, I have read with great interest the second issue of Astounding Stories, and note your invitation for readers to express themselves. I enjoyed the whole magazine, finding the literary quality surprisingly high. Especially good were Spawn of the Stars and Creatures of the Light. Harl Vincent's tale was the best of his I have read, and Captain Meek's are always good. The Corpse on the Grating, however, was merely Poe's Fall of the House of Usher done over, and not half so well. As for the sort of tales I like, here they are in order of preference. 1. Tales of Weird Mystery Merritt's Moon Pool and his others Taine's White Lily 2. Interplanetary Adventure A Columbus of Space by Service The Skylark of Space by Smith 3. Different Stories that Defy Classification Based on New Ideas of Science most of Wells' short stories are examples. 4. Detective, Fourth Dimension, and Air Adventure, only well done. Jack Williamson, Box 661, Canyon, Texas. A Brick or Two Dear Editor, For the last three years we have been reading any and all of the various science fiction magazines which have appeared upon the market. We therefore feel that we are as well qualified as anyone to offer the criticism and advice that follows. First, the stories. We feel that it would be a good idea to get your stories from the same authors whose work has been and is being accepted by the other magazines in this field. In one case you have already done this, and I consider his stories to be the best in each issue. I believe that you will be forced to do this eventually anyhow because the people who read this magazine will naturally be readers of the others also, and will therefore be used to the standards set by those publications. Then you should have someone who is well qualified to pass upon the science in the stories. Second, the cover design and the pictures at the beginning of each story. Up to this time, the cover and inside pictures have contained many mistakes. The cover of the March issue was especially atrocious. In the first place, a voyager in outer space would find it jet black and studded with stars, instead of blue and apparently empty, except for a few tremendously oversized planets, a moon with entirely too many craters, and a total eclipse of the sun with a very much distorted corona visible beside the earth. Illustrations by your cover artist also appear in another publication, but these are much superior to the ones in Astounding Stories. Here also a scientific advisor would be welcome. Third, I think it would be a good idea to have a department in which readers could write their opinions of the stories and suggest improvements in the conduct of the magazine. Fourth, I think there should be a scientific editorial in each issue by some eminent scientist. This is also a feature in the other magazines. We hope that you'll take these criticisms and suggestions as they were offered in good faith. We also hope that the circulation will increase as the magazine becomes better. George L. Williams and Harry Hylison, 5714 Howe Street, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Wonderful! Dear Editor, I received your magazine last week, Astounding Stories and I think it is wonderful. I am very glad that I subscribed for it. I can hardly wait to get the latest one, which I hope to receive today, and was very much disappointed when it did not arrive. 
I hope you will consider a quarterly, or at least an annual, in the near future. I wish you success with this magazine, and hope you will forgive my writing you so often in reference to your magazine. Louis Wensler, 1935 Woodbine Street, Brooklyn, New York but we made our bow only last january dear editor last month my boy brought one copy of this magazine home and i want to ask you if you would send me the copies from last january nineteen twenty nine up to december nineteen twenty nine if you charge no more than three dollars would you send them c o d do you have the issues for nineteen twenty eight too i never knew there was a magazine like that on the market I never bought one because most of them are no good, and when one has children, one has to be doubly careful. But this magazine is just right. No silly love stories and mushy stuff in them. It sure keeps your mind from unpleasant things. We can get them from the newsstand, but I would like to subscribe for them. Keep up the good work, and please send me the last year's copies, and let me know if I could get 1928, too. Mrs. M. Ristan, 4684 North Broadway, Denver, Colorado. Best One Yet Dear Editor, The April issue is the best one you've put out yet. Arthur J. Burks is good. I hope to see much of him in the future. Brigands of the Moon by Ray Cummings is getting better with each installment. The stories of Dr. Bird are always interesting. I would like to see one in each issue, if you could arrange for it. As long as the other readers like the size of Astounding Stories, I will too. But please cut all the edges smooth, like the latest issue of Five Novels Monthly. I would like to see a full-page illustration with each story, and if possible, by Wesso. I am glad that you are starting another serial in the May issue of Astounding Stories. I like serials and I hope that you will always have two in each issue. Your schedule for the May issue looks good, and I'm sure it will be with such authors as Murray Leinster, Victor Rousseau, Ray Cummings, Harl Vincent, and Sewell P. Wright. I am still waiting for a different colored cover. Jack Darrell, 4225 North Spalding Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. An Enthusiastic Reader Dear Editor, As a reader of long standing of science fiction, I feel I am qualified to make some remarks and give my opinion of the wonderful Astounding Stories magazine lately put out. Although I read three other science fiction magazines, none of them have aroused in me such a wonderful enthusiasm as Astounding Stories. Before I forget it, I want to mention that I read two quarterlies also. The reason, or rather reasons, for my enthusiasm I will now enumerate. 1. The stories are wonderful. 2. The binding is very strong and efficient. 3. The print is just right, and soothing to the eyes of one who reads much. The paper is good, and the size and price of the magazine is just right. The covers are excellent, and with the addition of the Reader's Corner, the magazine becomes absolutely perfect. Truly a wonderful start. See that it is kept up. The only thing that can still spoil the magazine is poor stories. Science fiction stories that contain no science. In Vampires of Venus, the plot was rather weak. Even if the Venerians knew nothing of entomology, they should have brains enough to get rid of the vampires the way Leslie Larner did without having to call an Earthman to help them. Another thing, the Venerians kept only insects that were not harmful to the crops. On Earth there are such insects who help the farmer by eating harmful insects. If the harmful insects were exterminated, an almost impossible and gigantic task, the harmless insects would change their diet and become harmful too. And it seems funny too that such a highly civilized planet as Venus should still depend on domesticated animals for food, drink, and clothing, instead of manufacturing what they need synthetically. The April cover on your magazine was wonderful. Before I close, I wish to say a word about the Science Correspondence Club, of which I am a proud member. There is little to say, however, after reading Conrad Ruppert's letter in the April issue. 
The membership has increased to over 300 now, numbering among them quite a number of famous scientists and authors. All I can say is that I hope every scientifically inclined person of whatever nationality, creed, color, or sex they may be will join this wonderful and rapidly progressing club. I will now close thanking the publishers of Astounding Stories for issuing such a wonderful magazine. Stan Osowski, E2, Railroad Street, Central Falls, Rhode Island. But Coniston was an impostor. Dear Editor, I read with interest Mr. Ray Cummings' story, Brigands of the Moon, in the March number of Astounding Stories. The tale was a worthy one from the pen of so clever a writer. I do think, however, that the author might have left out the point about Sir Arthur Coniston, an English gentleman, turning traitor. This sort of thing is hardly calculated to bring about a friendly feeling between England and America, the two greatest countries in the world. I have the greatest admiration for the United States, and though we may have a little fun at each other's expense, there is no ill-feeling meant but I really hope you will not publish any other story like that one. An Englishman, Montreal, Canada. Likes the Romance Dear Editor, I have just finished my second copy of Astounding Stories, and I wish to say I have enjoyed every story. For some time I have been a reader of science fiction, but none will compare to Astounding Stories. These stories seem to have the proper amount of romance in them, to make them really interesting, and it adds the proper touch. I have no criticism to make. May I wish you a great success with this magazine. Frank I. Sontag, 825 Prescott Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania. High Praise, Dear Editor, Allow me to congratulate you upon the establishment of the Reader's Corner. I do not know which was the first issue of your delightful magazine but I've been buying it regularly for quite a few months. I may not be an experienced critic, but it can be easily seen by anyone that this magazine is one of the best on sale. I, for one, enjoy your stories more than any other stories I have ever read. I have just finished the second part of the four-part serial entitled Brigands of the Moon. I think Ray Cummings is the best author I have ever met up with in stories. The drawings are fine, the print is excellent, but I think the paper could be improved. But by no means change the size of your little magazine. The size is just right. In your April issue, I read in The Reader's Corner about a science correspondence club. Believe me when I say I'm sending immediately for an application blank. I think the idea of this club is excellent. Truly you have contributed a great gift to the science fiction readers in offering this magazine to the receptive public. Theodore L. Page, 2361 Los Angeles Avenue, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Don't do it! Dear Editor, This afternoon I saw Astounding Stories for the first time, and immediately grabbed a copy, as I have read others of the Clayton Group, and moreover am a science fiction fan. The newsstand has no back numbers, and I simply must have the March 1930 issue, as I wish to read Brigands of the Moon. So here is twenty-five cents in stamps, to cover purchase price, and cost of mailing me a copy of that issue. Have you a complete file since Volume 1, Number 1? If so, what is the cost, including charges? I'm sorry that I missed this magazine before, but you can rest assured that I'll miss no more. In the reader's corner, I notice a call from Stephen to Cax for a change in size. Don't do it. The size and shape are okay, and to make it the awkward size of most magazines, including two of the science fiction magazines that I'm now a confirmed reader of, would not improve it a bit. You have two of my favorite authors in the April number. No, I see it is three, Burks, Cummings, and Meek. They are okay, but don't forget a few others, such as Burroughs, Verrill, Hamilton, Koblenz, Keller, Quinn, Williamson, Leinster, Rep, Vincent, Flagg. Oh, why continue? 
You certainly know all the good authors of our kind of fiction. Try them all. Of course, the other science fiction magazines that I take are full of stories by my favorites, but you can get stories by them, too. From this one issue that I've read, I can see only praise for your publication. Here's to a long life and a happy one. Don't forget to send me the March issue as fast as the mail can get it here. Robert J. Hyatt, 1353 Kenyon Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C. Worst Ever Read Dear Editor, Since you invite criticism as well as praise, I am impelled to state that by far the worst story I ever read in any science fiction magazine was Vampires of Venus by Anthony Pelcher, which appeared in your April issue. It was so idiotic, so flat and inane, that it might have passed for a burlesque rather than a straight story, were it not painfully evident that the author was serious. The yarn was unworthy of astounding stories, and did not belong in this magazine. The other stories, except for an amateurish attempt called The Man Who Was Dead, were deeply engrossing and of unusual merit. Sears Langell, 1214 Boston Road, New York The Reader's Corner All readers are extended a sincere and cordial invitation to come over in the Reader's Corner and join in our monthly discussion of stories, authors, scientific principles, and possibilities, everything that's of common interest in connection with our astounding stories. Although from time to time the editor may make a comment or so, this is a department primarily for readers, and we want you to make full use of it. Likes, dislikes, criticisms, explanations, roses, brickbats, suggestions, everything's welcome here. So come over in the reader's corner and discuss it with all of us. The Editor End of Chapter 19 End of Astounding Stories 8, August 1930 by Arthur J. Burks